<laughs> All right, and now that we are able to bridge this apparent illusory gap, we will allow for these emanations from our society to reach all of you in this unique co-creative manner. Without further ado, we ask all of you, how are you all? This now of your ever-present experience of the now. Wonderful, thank you for coming. Most it is our pleasure. <laughs> our pleasure and joy to interact with the two of you and all beings observing this telepathic communication amongst not just myself and the channel, but all of us in this unique web of life. Thank you. Pratisha, go ahead. Yes. Uh, well, do you have uh, something to share right away, or uh, should I think of a question? Understand, you're already thinking of questions in your multidimensional aspects, and you will soon see them emerge as they become relevant to the conversation. However, we shall reveal some exciting information to all of you, so you can further integrate yourselves in your own unique processes. The information we wish to provide is such, understanding that right now you are experiencing rapid permeability of what you call highly positive versions of Earth now available to all of you. Understand this is in relationship to all of your unique consciousnesses and the doors you are all opening together in the dream world. So understand it may look like certain things in your reality are slightly the same. Maybe you're taking similar actions. Maybe you're exploring similar themes. But understand the changes you are creating within your dreaming realities are allowing for the bridging of particular gaps to now be fulfilled in such a way where you have strong access to these unique reality experiences in a way that was not as accessible before. And you will find that you can allow for what seems to be the mystery of life, what many call the chaos of life, to actually be an unfolding of events that are portals. They are portals to greater expansion of yourself and the more unlimited in your belief systems you can be in this moment, the more freedom in that sense you will have to positively utilize the portals. And you will find Things that you did not even dream possible are available because in that dreaming realm, you've been dreaming them possible and living them there to teach the you in the temporal reality that it is actually a reality that the physical you can shift to. Realizing the dreaming you and the physical you are the same self, but you're soon beginning to realize the dreaming you is still alive and still awake behind the scenes co-creating your reality, almost as a seemingly separate being. But that's just how efficient it is, that it seems like a greater aspect of yourself that is co-creating infrastructure for you. But what you will find is it's just you. This is linked to the higher self, but understand this dreaming version of you we are expressing is symbolic of the connection that you have to what you call your soul. The higher self being the bridge between the you on the ground and the soul. Understand the dreaming you is another version of yourself slightly different than the higher self. This is a version of you that is actually co-creating an entire dreaming reality that is alive and the higher self derives information from this dreaming you and will send this to your reality. The higher self will also extract and derive information from other facets of your incarnational themes and higher aspects of your own consciousness. In many ways, it's akin to a messenger, also akin in this way to what you call a northern light because the higher self will always orient you to the most positive, exciting points of view of all of these simultaneous versions of yourself. And we thought you'd find that a little fascinating, understanding that you are many beings as one being, and the higher self is essentially the ultimate assistant as well as the ultimate beacon, revealing to you more of who you are through synchronicity. 
That's beautiful. Thank you. You are so welcome. And I wanted to ask in uh, like like last week, I, or yesterday, more than two or three times, perhaps I was uh, in a dreaming state, and I was able to stay in that dreaming state while awake. Uh, I knew that I was dreaming, you know, and uh, I. Uh, I'm not uh, because I cannot define it. I cannot hold it there. Is it possible like this? Yes, understand that your experience is accurate, and it is actually a precursor of what is to come. Realize that yes, this is still the dream realm, a physicalized version. But what you will soon begin to extend very naturally, or all of you, all of you, the view where you'll realize you're not just in the dream realm, you're in the spirit realm. The dreams allow for you to access more of your spirit through symbolism as you remember it when you awaken. But you'll soon realize through the revelations, the dreams and their integration into your reality frameworks will show you is that you're actually connected directly to the spirit realm and you're still in the spirit realm. So the dreaming connection you're experiencing of experiencing the sensation of dreaming while awake is foreshadowing a greater level of awareness that is being birthed into your reality. It is just one aspect of spirit that is revealing itself, and you will find that the greater aspects of spirit that are what you would call the more mysterious qualities of the dreaming realm, the infinity of the dreaming realm emanating to source, that is what is essentially being downloaded for all of you here. That is what is being co-created here. Now, we want to send you all a little idea to cultivate the knowingness through belief. It starts with belief saying, I believe such and such. When you infuse that with enough of your positive energy and you deconstruct the belief systems that are in contradiction to it, you develop a level of consciousness that transcends belief, known as knowingness. The more in a state of knowingness you can emanate that you are in the dream realm, you are in the spirit realm, the more you create that version of Earth for yourself. And it is all about the unlimited point of view. Because spirit has no true limitation. And when you remove of all limitation, you have no choice but to experience spirit in that way on earth directly. That is what this leads to. That is where your passion is leading you to. That is where your excitement is leading you to. And this is what we wish for you to cultivate a knowingness of, and it will birth it much more quickly. Thank you. Thank you. That makes perfect sense. It was a wonderful answer. You are so welcome. If I may speak up. uh, Of course, please, please. Should I? (laughs) All right. Uh, Thank you so much. First of all, I'd like to mention what's really interesting to me is I'm listening to several channels in various stages and states. This time when you came through, there was a specific, let's say, energy translation in terms of actually me feeling kind of shudders in a sense, like chills in a positive way, right? So that's great. That's really interesting. And also a feedback I get through channeling. Maybe the conduit gets as well. Maybe you get as well. Maybe you as Sasani are quite familiar with. And what I'd like to ask about is the idea about the differentiation, let's say, between the words that are spoken during channeling and the frequency that is being emitted. Yes. And, uh, well, anything that you would like to share about this, and in particular, let's say, many people, of course, focus on the words, and they are very important and can be very enlightening and helpful to many. Yet it seems that what's even more important, even in the channeling state, is the frequency that is being uh, allowed, let's say. Would you like you to are, elaborate on that? You are absolutely correct in this assessment, understanding the words are just symbols. But understand, the words are multidimensional symbols. They will point to whatever it is the observer of the words is capable of perceiving. 
Whatever limitation is there will create a limitation in the illumination of the word's fullest application. The observer, in this sense, is both the beings witnessing the channeling as well as the channel themselves in whatever capacity they are witnessing the energy exchange. The more unlimited both parties, in that sense, can be, the more realities the symbolic quality of the word can reveal. And you're starting to see the words are actually multidimensional. So understand that when you see someone speaking, you see someone channeling who is saying very good things, but there is not a strong level of resonance. Understand it's not that they are not channeling or they're not providing a valid message, but the idea is there are aspects of limitation, whether it be in the channel or whether it be in the observer, that create a limitation of the full illumination of the provided word. Yes, thank you. However, I also find that even though there may sometimes be uh let's say, uh, differences of opinion in terms of using certain words. I had this yesterday. Still, uh, the frequency of the channeling oftentimes is very well received. And this, is, this seems, to me, seems to be even more important than the words that are being expressed. Yes, you are correct in this assessment because the transaction in that manner is multi-dimensional. Understand the transaction in this way is revealing one moment, one moment, the channel's attention is being directed to a telephone call, allow for this to pass, and we will allow for the transmission to come in smoothly. All right, now that this has passed, we will get back to the topic at hand. Understand that it is a transaction between the being coming through, the higher self and dreaming aspects of the physicalized beings involved in the channeling process. Because you exist on all of these levels, there is so much exchange taking place between all of these different extra-dimensional aspects of yourself connected to your physical reality experience. And what you're finding is that you're tapping into these transactions, these exchanges that are taking place in the realms that are less obvious. And that is actually really what's going on. Because remember, the physical reality is still a dream. It is still symbolism. When you look at it as reality, you begin to limit, as in a sense, the concrete reality. You begin to limit your awareness of the energy exchanges that are taking place in these extra dimensional senses. What you are going to find is that when you release these limitations, you become aware of these dynamics that are always present. And that is really what is going on. The physical reality is just a of the greater dynamics that are taking place within the energetic exchange. <clears throat> Thank you. You are welcome. Then uh, just one more idea, uh, if yes. you would like to share about this, what I noted, and I'm certain many others noted who have listened to quite a few channelings or even different sources and especially similar sources or similar cultures like Sasani, that there is a certain let's say, willingness to repeat uh, certain ideas. Um, if there's anything you'd like to share about this, why there is this repetition, my assumption uh, or my understanding simply being that core ideas are being repeated right now, let's say on infinite, until all the entities listening in, in finally integrated them because there is just a core understanding which is so important that it kind of must be repeated before other information can really be discussed. Yes, we shall, yes, we shall share about this. Understand that the core ideas come through when they are relevant. There are people who are already embodying the core ideas. Oftentimes they are less emphasized. You'll notice in our conversations with you, we are oftentimes not mentioning what is typically viewed as Sasani core ideas. We emphasize it, we point to it, it is something we all live by, but we understand how you are living your lives. And this is why we don't emphasize some of these core ideas. For others though, who are new to our history, to our technology, because the formula of excitement is a technology, it is a permission slip so you can build your life a particular way. When we are interacting with people who are not familiar with that, we repeat the idea. And we drill it in, in that sense. We allow for it to become 
a vibration the individual collective they are connected to becomes then saturated with. Not so they have to choose it and they're boxed in, but so they understand it. They have been familiarized with the teaching and the vibration enough times where if they ever choose to then explore it, it will feel as natural to them to a certain degree as making any other choice in their reality. That is why we drive in core ideas. We are helping you to allow for these ideas to not be blocked or riddled with limitation and to instead become available and obvious. And this is our methodology for the repetition. Yes, I think it's the perfect way, so thank you. <laughs> you are quite welcome, our pleasure. Yes, thank you for, for this interaction. I, I wanted to ask uh, about the uh, serious connection and uh, the sun and serious connection uh, and uh, about um, not only uh, aquatic forms as um, many share but uh, let's say about uh, a specific form which calls itself Adronis if you can uh, if you can tell what's your connection with him or, or what, what would you say about him thank you being Adronis yes all right, systems. This is essentially an aspect of their consciousness, which you could say represents a multidimensional being, but remember it is an emanation of collective consciousness that acts as a bridge, a mediary between the Sirius star systems and other star systems, because this aspect of consciousness allows them for the downloading of these other collective ideas from other star systems, and then essentially processes it in such a way where it is then disseminated amongst the many beings, the many civilizations that are alive within the Syrian star system. I see. And is there anything else you want to say about Sirius connection and Sassan connection? All right, we are happy you are asking. Yes, understand we are engaged with the collectives within the Sirius system because it is, again, many civilizations there working again with other societies to be able to bring your earth into a particular focus through our collective perspective. This particular focus allows for many teachings to be provided through these types of interactions. Understand the point that was brought up earlier of what's happening behind the scenes being a little more important. When we are talking to you in this way, we are not just transmitting Sasani emanations. We are serious emanations away. This is my... As well as other beings and their points of view that we feel are relevant and in resonance with your own collective and individuated consciousnesses. I see. Yes, Rafa? Yeah, no, this is, this is interesting because... Um... It's my impression, I mean, it's obvious also through Bashar, through other entities, through those who feel resonant and channel also Sasani in any way that it seems, even though it may not be as, let's say, explicit as uh, Bashar does it at times, that Sasani also acts, of course, as for the higher self. And also, I imagine it kind of like a switchboard operator in a sense, um, even though it may be more subtle or more mixed together. But yeah, I noticed this as well. However, I have a, another question, whatever you would like to say about this, and then one more question about, let's say, individual limitations of the channel. All because right. As I understand that uh, while accessing the Sasani frequency, first of all, is then limited in his expression in terms of the, let's say, also conscious aspects and whatever openness is available in the moment. Yes. Um, whatever you'd like to say about this, my assumption being that even any limitation, even any apparent lack of information that may not be able to be delivered through any channel, even though it may be available within Sasani, then just is, well, I guess, again, a, a perfect reflection for the conversation, or it would just indicate maybe that those present would have to get that information through a different way. If there's anything you'd like to say about this. We will say the following. What comes through the channel will have 
relevance to varying degrees. And the amount of information that comes through is oftentimes, as you have said, actually affected by the certain belief system constructs the channel themselves have about what information can be emanated. This is a growing journey of someone who chooses the path of channel. Understanding that the deeper they go into it, the more liberated they must then become within themselves to allow for the Sasani, if they are channeling Sasani, to then express themselves in your version of reality with a more unlimited point of view. So it is, as you were saying, the limiting beliefs of the channel that absolutely will affect the level and in-depthness of information that is able to then come through. Yes, and then I assume the, the relevant point for the channel, especially the channel that is conscious of the process, is not to judge oneself for what information is available or not, but to trust any idea of it. Because, for example, when being asked specifics in particular, and uh, I'm connecting to Susani, and then sometimes I'm blanking out or I'm only getting very specific ideas, and then I'm wondering, like, okay, I'm just getting an image. Should I just relay that image? Is that now correct or not? Whatever this may mean. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything you like, for example, some, yeah, I, I, I see you can relate, please. Absolutely. Understand these are challenges. These are challenges presented by your guides to assist you in growing the skill because it is in one way, a little easier to translate thought emanation. So when you receive the telepathic link, it may be coming in as thoughts. It can be a little easier because it seems like you have a very easy path. Your guides then will challenge you so you can then learn how to think without words to apply in your lives. That is why these images come through and they can be translated in the channeling state and you will find the images are encapsulating what the word telepathic link may not be able to in a way where it could be conveyed in its fullest because when the channel then receives the image of whatever it is they are receiving an image of, it will then allow for them to experience that concept more directly than they would if it were just thought emanations in the form of words. Thank you. Um, sometimes I experience this and it's a very, actually, like, as you say, it is a challenge, but also a great tool because it shows let's say the whole thought concept in one image, or I see it sometimes as like an animation, consciously translate. It's just that other times I'm receiving, in this case, I, I'm either blanking or then I'm receiving images or flashes, but I'm not receiving the concept behind them. So then in the channeling state, I'm not precisely sure if I should translate them or how, or if I should just relay whatever image it is, and just note, like, okay, this is the image that uh, Sasani is sending the conduit at this point, and that's all that can be shown, however simple it is. I don't know. What would you recommend? We would recommend the following. If you feel inspired at the moment to begin to translate it with zero expectation of what's going to come out of your mouth, you may find that it will open a variety of different doors for you in terms of your channeling ability and how the telepathic link can then manifest. You are familiar with some channels that actually are not receiving words all the time. Sometimes they are in deep daydream. They are seeing landscapes or dreamscapes. This is that skill developed. And when they are channeling, they are actually immersed in the imagery and it is allowing for them to go so far into that world that whatever vocalized words they produce will of the reality experience they are psychically tapping into. All right, thank you. So the, the main, let's say, practical idea would be to, as far as possible, just go into it with whatever caveats and just uh, basically see wherever it leads and just, yeah, go as far as possible, let's say. Exactly, and you will find it is a whole nother way of thinking, a whole nother way of relating to reality that is not just relevant to channeling, but is relevant to all aspects of life. There are actually people on your planet alive today that think in this manner and function 
very well, more so than most in terms of how they live their lives, in terms of quality of life, than many people on your society who utilize words as the primary thought construct experience. Makes perfect sense, thank you. You are quite welcome. We thank you for the co-creation of this interaction. It has been our pleasure, passion, bliss, excitement to be able to speak to all of you in this way, aware of our multidimensional selves, speaking freely amongst one another as you experience yourselves in the physical and as we experience you from quasi-physical and the dreaming states. Our pleasure to be with you here in the now. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, that was great. Uh. <laughs>